In today's world, finding the facts and applying the truth to solve complicated problems is a bold move. Become an actuary and use your math skills to bring predictability to uncertainty. Actuaries are respected professionals and truth tellers valued across the globe. And actuaries are the U.S. News number 22 top paying career. Explore a great career in a field you love, making a real difference for real people. Find your path. The world needs actuaries more than ever. On today's Smart 7, Keir Starmer heads to The Hague. The UK pledges aid for Libya, flood victims and lots more. It's Friday the 15th of September. It's World Afro Day and happy birthday, Tom Hardy. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. Stopping the small boats has become one of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's key pledges, but one which has so far failed spectacularly. Now with an election on the horizon, Labour leader Keir Starmer has stepped forward with a new plan, aimed mainly at tackling the criminal gangs behind the Channel crossings. He headed to The Hague on Thursday to meet with Europol leaders and announce how Labour would tackle the issue. The government has lost control of our borders and we can see that with the number of crossings there are across the Channel in small boats. We have to stop that. And I think the only way to stop that is to smash the gangs that are running this vile trade. The Labour plan involves a deal with the EU, which would see a programme on migrant returns in exchange for accommodating a certain number of asylum seekers. Labour Shadow Minister Nick Thomas-Simmons says Labour will also be able to strike a deal with the EU and that any such deal does not impact Brexit. It is an objective, and I believe we would be in a far better position to do that than this government, which frankly has been trashing our reputation. Meanwhile, the Tories were still struggling to recover from Wednesday's in action man jibe that seems to have really hurt Rishi's feelings. Commons leader Penny Mordaunt had clearly been brainstorming for a return insult. I think the Labour leader is Beach Ken. Beach Ken stands for nothing on shifting sands in his flip-flops, doing nothing constructive to stop small boats or grow the economy. Fresh from Wednesday's Downing Street Health Summit, Health Secretary Steve Barclay had flagged concerns over the NHS's ability to cope with the demand in the upcoming winter. But PM Rishi Sunak says it's all under control. Winter's always a challenging time for the NHS and this year we've started planning for winter earlier than ever before, making sure that patients can get the care that they need. The so-called Health Summit has led to a release of additional funds for the NHS this winter with a £200 million resilient fund designed to help patients get care as quickly as possible. There's also an additional £40 million pounds to boost social care capacity and speed up hospital discharge rates. Steve Barclay says as part of the government's plan to get help to the NHS earlier before winter hits. Well this is additional money from the Treasury recognising uh, the challenges that we faced. One of the things health leaders said to us is they want funding announced earlier to help them in terms of their preparation. That is exactly what we responded to. Thursday saw Ukraine launch another wave of strikes on Russian targets in Crimea. This time they targeted an air defence system after an attack on a naval yard in Sevastopol, which appears to have destroyed an amphibious landing ship and damaged a submarine. It comes as the Minister of Defence for the Russian Federation, Sergei Shoigo, appeared hesitant about the prospect of a Russian victory for the first time. The counter-offensive has been underway for months now. We survived the spring and summer campaigns, and now the fall campaign has started. We have no other option but to win. The Ukrainian counteroffensive continues to make slow progress, but there remains hope that there will be a significant breakthrough soon. In the meantime, President Zelensky continues to entertain European visitors who bring messages of hope and support, including none other than Stephen Fry, who described his surprise at the resilience of the Ukrainian people. I expected all kinds of things, but I did not expect the most common thing I saw, which is laughter. I, I've met some people who've lost their limbs, people who've lost family, but all of them seem to have a united Ukrainian sense of humor that I think explains a great deal of your success in the last year or so. Four. 
The United Nations has announced it will donate 10 million US dollars from its Central Emergency Response Fund to Libya as authorities struggle to cope with the aftermath of devastating flooding caused by Hurricane Daniel. The floods caused two dams to burst, leaving over 11,000 dead and 20,000 more still missing. Jans Lerick, a spokesperson for UN Humanitarian Affairs, has said there's now a huge concern over the spread of waterborne disease following the floods, which could cause a secondary wave of death, and that international aid is vital for Libyan people in the coming days and weeks. Conservative MP David Rutley says the Foreign Secretary has committed the UK to doing what it can. The Foreign Secretary announced an initial package worth up to £1 million to provide life-saving assistance to meet the immediate needs of those most affected by the floods. So to come on the Smart 7, George Russell is excited about Singapore and NASA needs your help. Right after this. The U.S. Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Earn great pay with outstanding federal benefits and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash career slash USBP. Welcome back. The weekend sees a Singapore Grand Prix take place. It's one of the more exciting circuits and tracks that has been altered to shorten the race and make it more competitive. Mercedes driver George Russell is hoping the changes will work to his advantage after a challenging season so far. The team are in second place in the Constructors' Championship but need more points to stay clear of Ferrari. I think it's going to make the racing a bit more exciting. I think Singapore is a really great circuit to drive but it's a little bit challenging to race on. And historically, it's only really been turn five, which has been an overtaken opportunity. Whereas now, I hope maybe into the new turn 16, there'll be another another chance. This week has been an insane time for UFO enthusiasts. First, there was a highly suspicious announcement in Mexico of the discovery of so-called alien corpses. Then NASA held a press conference on what it's now calling unidentified anomalous phenomena. They're trying to be more open about the possibilities of alien life and are looking to recruit citizen sky watchers to help. Administrator Bill Nelson explains. Oh, and we'll have more on the story in this week's Sunday 7. We don't know what these UAP are. That's why I'm announcing that NASA has appointed a NASA Director of UAP Research. We've had Gone Girl, we've had Little Women, and now 2023's feminist screen adaptation is Lessons in Chemistry, originally written as a novel by Bonnie Garmus. It follows fictional character Elizabeth Zott, who is fired from her job as a chemist after falling pregnant in the 1960s, before she's then hired as a cooking show host a decade later. Brie Larson stars as captain of the kitchen in a story that unites feminism, politics, love and family. The series drops on Apple TV Plus on October the 13th. You've got something almost no one has. Breaking through the atmosphere. A platform. What you say matters. Politics don't belong in the kitchen. A man wants his wife to make him a drink after a long day at work. Why do you assume that his day was longer than hers? Why don't you make a drink? You've been listening to The Small 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes. We'll give you the world. Balancing the needs of your business and your employees has never been more important. Do both with Concur Expense. Speed up your finance processes, ensure compliance, and pay your employees on time when you automate your expenses. And with a handy mobile app, your teams can work from anywhere while focusing on what matters most, the bottom line. Move your business forward with SAP Concur Solutions. Visit concur.com to learn more.